Venerable religious and uh, dear parishioners, we begin Catholic Education Week, and I would like to speak about the importance and necessity of Catholic education. But first of all, a quick word on uh, where I was last weekend. And I was in Washington, D.C., and I was at the National March for Life. And I can say that I now know what a crowd, not of thousands or tens of thousands, looks like. I know what hundreds of thousands of people looks like. It is amazing. This was held on Friday, uh, January 18th. And Apparently in this day era of technology, it's still very hard to get an exact number. I saw some estimates. One estimate said 200,000 people. Another estimate said 500,000 people, half a million. And then another estimate, 650,000. So the number is somewhere in there. But the... Uh, MC Jeannie Mancini, it's her name, she, as she was looking out over the crowd there on the National Mall, she said, this looks like the biggest number ever. And that's a good thing. Because we know that one of the most horrible scourges in our modern society is the killing of the most defenseless people of all, little children in their mother's womb. And one of the sayings that was repeated is, we will have to have this march until we don't have a reason to have it anymore. And we need to have reversed that terrible ruling in 1973, Roe versus Wade, which said that we don't know what's in there, so go ahead and terminate it, whatever it is. We, well... It was completely wrong then, even more wrong now. Now that we know through, med- through technology how truly that is a human life in there, it's nothing less than the butchering of babies. And so I was very pleased to raise my voice, one of the hundreds of thousands that, that was there, to proclaim that, you know, we must uphold the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. I want to, uh, well, there's a couple of downsides to these, to this march. Um, one of them that there were Protestants, uh, in the, and whenever the, and when the rosary was being prayed by Catholics, they, there was some cat calls or disparaging of that. And one of the very sad things about Protestantism is it has no regard for Our Lady. And yet there is a, a, an arm length of r- biblical reasons why Our Lady is so special. Remember last Sunday um, <laughs> in the Gospel, Jesus says to Our Lady, my hour is not yet come. I do not want to do anything public right now. And Our Lady prevails on him to work his first public miracle. The power of Our Lady with our Lord. Another downside to the uh, to the barch, as, as wonderful as it was, is unfortunately the lack of modesty. It's Even though it's the weather is cold and people aren't so much exposing themselves, still it's the very tight pants and tight clothing that is unfortunate because that certainly is not modest but but anyway I would like to go again and I will go to pro-life marches whether it's on the national level state level even local level but remember it's prayer and penance those are the things and of course spending time praying in front of abortion mills such as Planned Parenthood, that's what's going to help close down this horror that happens, not just in our own country, but throughout the world. And I also want to say how proud I am of the senior class of St. Michael's Academy, who specifically chose this March for Life to be their senior trip. 
And of course, they got to do some fun things and, uh, uh, and historical things are in and around Washington, D.C. Uh, two Saturdays ago, we went to Mount Vernon and very enjoyable time and just really great to spend the little time that I was, I was able to spend about two and a half days there. So being with them in the March for Life, um, going to a some historical places, having Sunday Mass for them, and then I had to get back uh, late Sunday evening a week ago. But just very, very happy that our young people saw the importance of this and said, let's make this our senior trip, uh, for which they fundraise through the year, you know, donuts, uh, Sunday donuts, uh, Valentine's Day dinner. So it's uh, really very happy about all that. But speaking of Catholic education, I found a quote, one of many good quotes from Pope Pius XI's encyclical on Catholic education, and it's in the bulletin. Uh, interestingly, this encyclical was published the last day of that very fateful year in our country's history, 1929, when the stock market crashed a couple of months before and ushered in the Great Depression. But of course, the teaching of the church continues, and Pope Pius XI was inspired to write this encyclical on how critical Catholic, well, education, but specifically Catholic education is. And the church, being a teacher and a mother, has to be most seriously concerned with the raising of children. And we are all subject to the church, so we have to listen to Holy Mother Church and to obey her laws, her guidelines, her teachings. And it only stands to reason that this is the formative years of children's life. And the church has to be most concerned that they be put in benign influences, that they be surrounded by good circumstances, that they be shielded from sin shielded from evil. So this is not just a right of the church, it's a duty of the church to always to be concerned about the raising of children. It's It obviously has tremendous spiritual implications. We all know that the way a person turns out in life, so much depends on number one, of course, the, the parenting, because it, the parents, by God's plan, are the first and primary educators, but also how they turn out will also depend on their schooling in a secondary way. It's so important that this needs to be said that we will make every sacrifice necessary to keep a Catholic school going. You know, we don't get funding from public sources. Uh, Unlike schools, public schools issue a levy that, you know, comes in, which means taxes are imposed on the population to fund that school. We can't do that. We have to do it all ourselves. And by the grace of God, we've been able to do it. We've been in existence for some 50 years. And we will continue to do it because it's that important. Catholic education greatly increases the chances. It's not a guarantee. It increases the chances of children holding on to their Catholic faith throughout their lives, living as Catholics, dying as Catholics. And even many years ago when public schools were certainly not as challenging and, and, and I, I shudder to think of some of the things that are being conveyed to children in public schools nowadays, but even many years ago, uh, the church was concerned about children being in public schools because, again, they're in an, in an atmosphere that excludes God, excludes the soul, and again, this is why the church has such great concern. So it, it, so if in situations where parents are not able 
and there, there's a serious reason not to have a child in public school, or rather Catholic school, then safeguards have to be taken. Um, they, they still need to be shielded from from uh, from the wrong kind of influence. We want to, as Pope Leo the Thirteenth said in the previous encyclical, he says every subject should be seasoned with Christian piety. I'm so happy that in our school we most freely talk about God. We talk about the soul. We talk about their eternal destiny. We look at the whole person. That's what Catholic schools can and in fact do. They look at the whole person. It's not just the body and the mind. It's the body, the mind, the soul, the eternal destiny. And and again, well said by Pope Leo the Thirteenth to have this uh, spirit of piety in everything they do, even if it's math class. We started off with a prayer. We can bring up Catholic ideas as we teach math, but as, most especially we teach the Holy Catholic faith and really try to get it you know, in, in their ear to get it in, to, to soak into them so it will stay with them well throughout their lives and help them to be strong. There's so many dangers our young people have to face. They have their own fallen human nature. They have the world getting more and more seductive. The devil never sleeps. He's always after our souls. So... We want to give them all that we can to help protect them and, and, and again, help them be strong in their faith. I, one of the great blessings in my life is that I was able to visit the place where St. John Bosco lived in Turin, Italy. And... Um, he is a very special patron of Catholic education, not the only one, but certainly one that we turn to for inspiration and help because he devoted his whole life to the raising of boys, especially reaching out to the ones that were cast-offs in society. Uh, unfortunately, even in his time, there were many street children they were just getting into crime and gangs and problems, orphans, many of them. And he just saw this, and indeed it was a tremendous need to, to reach out to them and educate them, help make them be Catholics. And he spared nothing in his life so that he could provide Catholic education for them. And then with the help of... Um, um, I believe it was Mother Mary Mazzarella. A, she did for girls, she and her order of nuns, what he and the Salesians were doing for boys. So what an inspiration. Saints and orders that they founded saying, let's devote ourselves to the education of youth. And St. John Bosco's motto was, Da Miki Animas... Chetera tole. For those that don't know Latin, give me souls, take the rest away. And through that motto, he was saying, the most important thing is their salvation. Nothing else is as important as that. I remember seeing one of the, uh, uh, the, the many pictures, many f photos, by the way, because photography was, had been invented. So we have photographs of St. John Bosco. One of them was how he looked, you know, every three or four years. And you can see this, you know, the, the toll that this was taking on his body and his health, just working for the young. And, and of course, you can see how he's aging and, and the toll that it's taking on his on him. But no matter, again, give me souls. Give me souls. 
don't worry about the other. The other things are not as, as important as that. But anyway, among the other pictures I saw is him sitting in an orchestra of his boys. You know, as been providing education, you look at the whole person. It's not just the spiritual, it's the intellectual, and it's also the fine arts. You know, these, these other things that are important. And here he is sitting here among, looks like 30 boys. You know, there's all kinds of orchestral instruments. Uh, it looks like a brass band. So he had trumpets and French horns and tubas and bassoons and all these other things. And, and he, I'm sure he really enjoyed seeing them develop their musical skill. That's all important. It's part of it. But again, he always kept the right perspective. Their musical achievements were not the most important thing. Their becoming saints was the most important thing of all. So I ask you to pray for our school, to pray that you know, it's not perfect, it's, and we keep working to make it better and better, but pray for all of the the teachers, the, the, the staff, pray for our students. Pray that we can become a better and better Catholic school. There's always room for improvement, as we know. And may we all be inspired by that uh, wonderful saying, which St. John Bosco uttered and certainly lived by, give me souls, take away the rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.